Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and welcome to the 16th Q&A session where I answer some of your tech related questions. So let's get on with the same. And the first question comes from Samir Mondal and he asks us, can you suggest me an Android phone within rupees 13,000 which will receive the ICS update and have a decent battery backup? Uh, Samir, the only phone that uh, comes to my mind in this uh, rising range as of now is the Sony Ericsson Live with Walkman. I would suggest that you check out my detailed in the preview of this phone uh, so that you can gauge the pros and cons of this phone. But this phone is getting the ICS update. And uh, the next question comes from Karnadex and he asks us, Ranjit, Hackintosh versus Mac, can you give me newer build parts that are available in India? Uh, Kandex, uh, the thing is that for generally making Macs, you require an Intel based processor and uh, you can use any motherboard but generally the gigabyte based motherboards are the preferred one. I would highly suggest that you look at the Stony Mac website, the link is shown on the screen where uh, you can just go to that site and go for the latest build. I'm not that uh, uh, up to date with the Hackintosh scene right now but this site is the source for Hackintosh. I hope this info helps. And the next answer comes from uh, Buram Ahmed. And if you remember in the last Q&A session, one of our users had asked us a question. If uh, is it possible to make your laptop a Wi-Fi hotspot under Windows without the use of any external software? And a lot of you guys have answered uh, regarding the Connectify software that you can download for free. That's great. But Mr. Buran Ahmed had uh, uh, suggested me this answer and using this procedure actually you can make your windows based laptop which has a wi-fi of course a wi-fi hotspot without use of any external software i haven't personally tried it because i don't have a spare windows based uh, laptop lying around but i'll just uh, post all the steps here in the screen you can check it out and give it a try and see, uh, let me know if it works And the next question comes from Singh Boni and he asks us, I want a portable hard drive with a Thunderbolt port of at least one terabyte capacity to use it with my MacBook Pro 2011 model. I have seen the Buffalo mini station Thunderbolt. Please help me in this matter. Personally, I didn't try any Thunderbolt uh, port based uh, what, uh, storage device, but uh, Lacey and even Western Digital has come up with a Thunderbolt port uh, device. You can look at these two. Uh, Lacey is a little bit pricey, but uh, Lacey has been making Thunderbolt uh, based storage device for quite some time. And the next question comes from Sankara Singh and he asks us, I have a Vision Tech 82GH 3G USB modem, uh, the speed of which is 7.2 Mbps and I use an Aircel 3G as my 3G SIM card. The problem is I do not get a proper signal in the house and I have to go to the terrace to use the internet. So please suggest me a way to get a signal in my home with the, a router or any other external antenna or something like that. Uh, help will be highly appreciated. The thing is Sankara, I don't know the specific model of uh, USB modem that you're using Vision Tech 82 GH, but I do know that some of these 3G data cards do have a slot for external antenna and you can add an external antenna to the same. I personally haven't tried using an external antenna. So if any of you guys already use a 3G data card with an external antenna, please share your, uh, uh, what, what do you say, experience in the comment section below. It'll be highly appreciated. And the next question comes from Shikara Saigani. He asks us, hi Ranjit sir, your videos are very good. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask, what is USB on the go and what are its advantages? Thanks. Uh, Shikara Saigal, USB on the go is a new standard by USB uh, where you can directly connect devices without the aid of your computer. So for example, uh, let's say your latest Android phone or whatever supports USB to the go, you can directly connect your digital camera to the same without using your computer. Again, you have to make sure the device what you're connecting needs to support this functionality. But the good thing is that modern uh, devices like modern Android phones, etc. Most of them are started to support this OS, uh, USB on the go. And also you can connect storage devices, for example, a portable hard drive or something like that directly to your, uh, what do you say, oh, uh, device, for example, an Android. For example, the Samsung S3 and some other Android phones do support this. And I have also seen you can connect, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, gaming controllers and even keyboards using this uh, USB on the go functionality. And the next question comes from Abhim7 and he asks us, I have brought a Windows 7 Premium recently, but my DVD-ROM is not working. So how can I install it on my PC? And there's one more part of the question. The first thing is, I would suggest that if it's a desktop computer, just go ahead and buy, buy a new DVD-ROM drive because DVD-ROM drives are pretty cheap. You can get one for around a thousand rupees. 
but again if you're not willing to buy a new one i would suggest that uh, you take your windows 7 cd to your friend's place where you have a computer and you can download this uh, software by microsoft i'll just uh, give the link in the show notes using which you can just copy the installation from the cd to a dv uh, what do you say a pen drive example uh, even a 4 gb pen drive would be good enough and the next part of the question is uh, he wants uh, abim continues i also want to know the difference between the genuine and pirated windows is it because of piracy thing that genuine windows always recommended I would uh, say that if you're building a new computer, only go for the genuine one because that's the right way to do. Piracy is illegal. Apart from the illegal thing, many of these pirated softwares can have Trojans or whatever built in. So there is a risk. And also you might not get all the latest Windows update to keep your computer secure with the pirated version. So again, if you're building a new Windows based computer, always go for the genuine version. And the next question comes from uh, GV Ganesh and he asks, Hi Ranjit, I like watching your videos. I wanted to know uh, when does the Google Nexus 7 uh, tablet is going to launch in India? I heard it was priced around Rs 10,000. Any idea when will be released in India? Again, there are a lot of misconceptions about uh, Google Galaxy, uh, so, sorry, uh, this uh, Nexus 7 tablet, that's a Google tablet. Yes, the 8 GB version uh, uh, sells in US for uh, $199. But do understand that this is the online price. This does not include the tax and the shipping costs. Generally, the tax varies from state to state in US. So it's approximately about 7 to 8% and add a shipping of about, let's say about $20 or so. So you're seeing the price of this Nexus 7 tablet, even in the US for the 8GB model to be around roughly around $230. And if you just multiply that price with the that dollar price with the Indian pricing, you come to a price of around 13,000. But I don't think so it will be priced that low because in India when the product comes, custom duties and other leeways get added. So right now Asus hasn't commented about any pricing, but I think so. Uh, Considering the price of 15 or 16,000 also is a very optimistic price. This is for the 8 GB model. Again, the 16 GB will be significantly priced a little bit higher. Uh, the good thing is Nexus 7 is going to launch in India. I think so by the next month, we should be able to see the same. And the next question comes from Shriya Skin and uh, she asks us, Hey Ranjit, is NVIDIA uh, GeForce 10 better than the integrated uh, i3 uh, graphics processor the thing to understand is that this i3 processor uh, what do you say the intel graphics specifically in the ic uh, i3 processor they are two variants the older version that is the hd 2000 i would say is more or less comparable to the geforce 210 but the new version that is uh, uh, the intel hd 3000 series is definitely going to be better than the geforce 210 and the next question comes from Dr. Prodigious and he asks us, I'm thinking of buying a laptop which has a third generation Core i5 and an NVIDIA GeForce GT610 uh, mobile graphic card. In the, the last video, you had mentioned that it's not necessary to have a graphic card with an i5. Can you elaborate more on this? Uh, can I play games like Crisis 2, NFS uh, uh, Most Wanted and other games which have uh, the system requirement without the graphic card that I have on an i5? The thing is that uh, uh, you are mistaking. I never said that you do not require a graphic card if you're using an i5, but the user was using a very outdated old graphic card. And the thing is that the i5, in the i5, the Intel uh, HD graphics that you get with the i5, that's approximately uh, HD 3000 and the new version IV Bridge have HD 4000 was much better than the uh, graphic card that the uh, the person was trying to use that's why i said there was no point in using that graphic card but definitely if you're going to buy a what do you say uh, i5 based laptop and you're going to do gaming and you have suggested that you're going to use the nvidia 610 i would not suggest that go for the nvidia 610 because it's a pretty weak card uh, if gaming is important, I would suggest that you look for a laptop that comes with at least NVIDIA 650M mobile processor. And regarding your second part of the question, can I play games like Crisis 2, Need for Speed, etc. with the integrated i5? As you're using the third generation of i5 processor, that's the Ivy Bridge. Uh, generally in the mobile uh, version, as I said earlier, there are two models with, with the first one is the HD 2500. I wouldn't recommend that. But with the HD 4001, you can easily play Crisis, etc. These games at medium resolution. Generally, most of these budget laptops come to the resolution of 1333 uh, into 768 pixels. And even with this integrated, uh, what do you say, graphic processor available on the i5, specifically the 
HD 4000, you should be able to play these games without any issues. And the next question comes from Peaches and he asks, Hi Ranjit, uh, I had previously asked you whether to buy the LG Optimus 2X or the Atrix 2X. Well, I ended happily buying the HTC One X, but now I need a good tablet. So should I go for the new iPad 3 or the Google uh, Nexus 7 tablet? Thanks a lot. This is the first thing you need to decide is do you want to stick to the Android platform or the iOS? Just make that decision. If it's iOS, then definitely the iPad. Else this Google Nexus uh, 7 tablet is great. Uh, I, I actually, I am also a little bit in a dilemma because uh, if you notice uh, by rumors are rife that by september sometime and uh, apple is going to launch a new tablet that's the mini uh, what do you say ipad mini and that will be in the size of around 7 inches or 7.5 inches so i'm also in a dilemma whether to go for the galaxy uh, sorry the nexus 7 tablet or the ipad uh, mini so i hope uh, i don't i know that i'm not giving you a straightforward answer but uh, that's what i want to share with you uh, the next question comes from Yash and he asks us, Hey Ranjit, your videos are very good and I have seen all your videos. Thanks a lot. Uh, I want to buy a PC uh, which should be able to do 3D modeling and rendering and gaming. I am interested in the Core i7 processor but I asked many guys, they told me to go for the AMD processor. I know that the I Core i7 destroys AMD processor in all ways but is i7 really good for 3D modeling and rendering and gaming? Thank you. The thing is that uh, I cannot talk a lot about 3D rendering and etc. That means 3D Studio Max etc. Because I personally uh, do not use these softwares. Uh, but definitely for gaming, uh, the i even the i5 is more more than enough. And i7 destroys obviously the AMD processor. But one thing where these AMD bulldozers specifically, I think so. You're looking at the 8, eight core model, the FX 8 core models. Uh, specifically uh, in some of the server environments where there is a lot of number crunching involved uh, these AMD 8 core processors sometimes go over the top even uh, compared to the i7 so for general computing I would say i7 is a much better deal but for some specific tasks for example I don't know if they are better for this 3d rendering job that you have asked I would say that it's best to ask this question specifically in forums way like 3d studio max or the rendering software that you use which is much more optimized i hope this answers your question and the next question comes from harpreet singh and he asks, hey ranjit can you suggest me a processor and a, a motherboard uh, and the amount of ram i have a budget of rupees thirteen thousand, and i am a gamer uh, and i want to use my pc for gaming i want to know what performance will my hd 56701 gb ddr5 uh, graphic card will give in respect of 1080p resolution uh, I, I'm assuming that you already have a graphic card so you do not need a graphic card so I would say that go for the i3 processor and uh, you can just go with a H60 uh, one based chipset that's pretty cheap that's around uh, I think so with 3000 bucks you should get an i3 I don't know the exact pricing about 6500 to 7000 so that's about 10,000 is gone and for RAM I would say uh, if you're using 32 bit uh, based windows 4 GB is enough else go for 8 GB and yes your current graphic card is uh, more than enough to play even 1080p resolution but it won't play in high detail you might have to lower the details to mid level i would suggest that uh, when you have enough money go and invest in another graphic card and this time go for at least a mid-range graphic card and that should give you a good enough system i hope this answers your question so these were the questions for the 16th q a session and i have a giveaway giveaway for you guys uh, th these guys at uh, max dvd have uh, given us an offer uh, if you have an ipad or uh, let's say an iphone or something and they are offering this free uh, video conversion software generally it's for about 40 dollars but if you go to this link you can download it, it for free do remember this free offer is only valid till August 15, 2012. I hope uh, if you're using an iPad or iOS device, the software helps. Uh, so that's it for now. And uh, if you would like that I answer some of your tech related questions in the next Q&A session, please post them below in the comment section and start it with the Q&A tag. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech 2 and I hope to see you in my next video.